boys for my screen. I landed in, uh, I landed in Statesville, live in Huntersville. Exit 36. If I could have your attention here in the media center, we'll now begin our winner's press conference here for the Exalta presents the Pocono 400 here at Pocono Raceway in the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. And we're joined by the race winning team, driver Ryan Blaney of the number 21 Motorcraft Quick Lane Ford for the Wood Brothers Racing, crew chief Jeremy Bullens, and car owners Lynn and Eddie Wood. Just a few notes here. This is win number 99 for the iconic Wood Brothers Racing Team, and the first since 2011. Wood Brothers have now won at least one Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series race in each of the last six decades. And the win clinches a spot in the 2017 NASCAR playoffs for Ryan Blaney. And Ryan, youth overpowered experience today. Please walk us through the, the pass of Kyle Busch and holding off Kevin Harvick for the win. Yeah, so um, we did a great job. I say we, Jeremy Bones and everybody did a great job of positioning ourselves to restart towards the front on tires uh, when the 18 stayed out. He looked to be the best car all day, and uh, it's almost a curse when you're that good. Everyone just kind of does the opposite of what you do uh, in that situation. And, you know, we've been on the bad side of that before. But uh, once we got to second, uh, I knew he was going to fall off pretty hard, and it was just a matter of getting by him before uh, everyone else, all the other really fast cars on you know, our strategy uh, got to second as well or got to us. Um, and it was a pretty good race uh, to get by Kyle there at the end of the race. And, and then having to hold Kevin off uh, was really tough. He was fast all day, and you, know, you just got to not mess up and hit your marks and, and take air away. And you know, props to him. He drove me really clean, and, and I have the utmost respect for him uh, doing that. And I've seen him win uh, countless races passing cars within the lap, last 10 laps. And um, he's, he does a great job at that. But you know, thank you to him again for racing me clean. But it was exciting in the car for sure. Hopefully it was exciting for the fans. And um, like I said, we just put ourselves in a spot to uh, capitalize on it uh, like, we, uh, like we did today. Now, Jeremy, this 21 team has had speed the whole season, consistent speed. You guys have been so close. What has been the key to really getting this 21 car up front and in position to win week in and week out? Just experience. I mean, we, you know, we started this thing part-time in 2015, uh, built the team, you know, put people together. Um, you know, made changes here, there, throughout, and, you know, have a group of people now that I feel like can compete as a team with anybody. Um, we've had good cars all year. Um, we've had good speed all year. And um, the last few weeks we've been really fast and just had some unfortunate things happen, but felt like we were in a position a couple times to, to take advantage of that. And, um, you know, today we, we put it all together and overcame some stuff, and it all worked out. Lynn and Eddie, this question is for the both of you. You've had so many legendary drivers in the seat of that 21 car. What makes this guy sitting to your left so special? <laughs> uh, he's special, all right. I mean, we, <laughs> when, when, when we, you know, we, like Jeremy said, we, we put the thing and deal together in 2015, and right away you knew, that, you know, Ryan was going to be special because it, he just had speed. You know, everywhere we went, he had speed, and, and that's something that it doesn't come easily. And, um, you know, we were on a brand new team. Everybody was new, young. And it just, um, every week, you know, we had, we had fast cars. And, and, you know, a lot of it is, is due to the driver. And, and, you know, with, you know, the alliance with uh, Team Penske, that um, is second to none. That just really makes a big difference. And, you know, Jeremy came over to be our crew chief. And uh, it just all worked out. Um, you know, Blaney is, he's on his way now. It's, uh, you know, he outrun two guys today that are champions, and um, and they're at the top of their game. And and to outrun them, um, to win a race here, uh, this is a, one of the toughest tracks that we go to. Uh, always has been, and uh, I'm really, really proud of him. And uh, he's here. He he's he's arrived now. Len, about you. You know, I think uh, when he pulled those rookie stripes off in Daytona, it. It made a difference in him. Um, I won't call it more aggressive, but it's kind of, um, and he's and it shows every week. You know, we've been we've been fast everywhere we've been. We've had issues. Um, you know, we were very close to a win at Texas, very close at uh, Kansas, and it kind of dawned on me. I said, you know, we're not going to win a race where we 
you know, it's expected that day we'll win somewhere that we don't expect it and it was here today. Outstanding. We're going to open the floor for questions. We're going to start with Holly and then we'll go to Zach. Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. Ryan, um, you know, y you have had other opportunities where you were out front or something, you know, came up. Did it help not having the communication back with the pits because I know of the of the radio issues were you yes. able <laughs> <laughs> did, did that put you kind Thanks, of in man. your in only your own head so to speak and did you drive any differently this time like this is not going to happen again I'm going to win this race yeah. Thanks for that I appreciate <laughs> it uh, I was saying we should just unplug my microphone more so I'm not complaining as much throughout the race but uh, you know that was a no, one of the, just one of the problems that we had, we had a loose wheel early and, and had to come back down and after that, and, and we didn't have track position after that. And there was such little cautions here that you couldn't drive your way back up there unless you were just lights out better than anybody else. So that's where they did a great job of putting us in a spot to where we're have a, have a shot at at the end. But, you know, the old hand on the door for, for was it tight, hand on the door? Doors tight. Yeah. Doors tight. <laughs> Roof, Roof was loose and <laughs> thumb up, thumb down. If it was good or not, or key the mic because they could hear the mic key. They just couldn't a lot of hear Morse me. code. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know, it might have. Yeah, I could say it maybe put you in your own head a little bit more if you're not, uh, you know, you're not talking as much. And uh, no, I would still key the radio. And, and I actually forgot the radio was broken after the last pit stop, I was trying to talk and I was, they were like, yeah, we can't, we still can't hear you. So <laughs> I, I completely forgot it was still, <laughs> still broken. But uh, yeah, there's definitely something I've never had happen before. Um, but uh, luckily I could hear them and, and we were able to work something out. Um, I didn't really drive any, any differently than I would have uh, before. You just try not to make mistakes, you know, one little mistake and, and he was going to get by us pretty easy and you try to hit your marks like you do all day. And, and uh, I think what really was able to hold him off is uh, I started downshifting in the tunnel turn and he was doing that when, when laps got on our tires and I was able to, you know, keep us RPMs up and, and get runs off that corner. So that, I thought that was the game changer that brought us to kind of even with him or, or at least closer to him. But uh, no, I, didn't, I didn't really drive anything different. You just try the best you can to, to focus and do what you do all day, which is hit your marks and, and try to make mistakes. We'll go next to Zach and then to Lee. Zach Sterniola from the Pocono Record. Uh, I want to talk first about this weekend. I have two questions for you. But this weekend I know was special for you, especially seeing Bubba make his first start here, mm -hmm. um, getting the picture before this race. Um, take me through, and, and also, being able to, to, to hold off champions like uh, Harvick and, and Kyle Busch there, how special was this victory for you personally? Yeah, we need Bubba in the Cup Series more. The one start he makes, I win the damn race. <laughs> 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 he needs to keep running. <laughs> but uh, uh, that was cool to have him. I don't, I don't know where he finished. I know they had problems on pit road or something like that. But, um, you know, I was behind him a little bit, and he seemed to be doing a really great job. But I know that was special for him. But, you know, to me – Obviously, your first win special, and to do it with the Wood Brothers and at a place where I vividly remember coming and watching my dad race here uh, so much was uh, is really special as well. And this is a hard racetrack. This is a one of the toughest racetracks we go to of playing with where to shift, how to shift, uh, what your car needs. It's three completely different corners. And uh, I felt like we were super strong through one in the tunnel and, and struggled in three, and you're going to have that. And, uh, you know, it's just really neat to be able to get these guys their 99th win, and, and hopefully we can go for 100 here. We'll go to Lee, then to Kay Lee, and then to Joseph. Lee Spencer, Motorsport.com. Have you talked to Dave yet? I haven't had my phone. No, I'm, I'm excited to get back and, and, uh, and talk to him. They had a big night last night up at Sharon Speedway, um, my dad's racetrack, and uh, Motocraft actually sponsored that night for the Motocraft. That was a big deal uh, for them to put that fr fan appreciation night on. And... Uh, Good fortune, I guess. They, they do something like that, and we go win the race. That uh, that was pretty cool, but I haven't talked to them yet. And speaking of good fortune, Andy, you sent me a, a copy of your lottery ticket last night, and obviously you're here because you didn't win the lottery. <laughs> but <laughs> is, is this better than winning the lottery, having your, you know, protege in victory lane? Yeah, yeah, this is way better. 
this um, <coughs> this will last forever. I mean, those, every win you get is very, very special, and especially when you get like Ryan's first win. And we've had a number of you know kids that come through our car that uh, won the first race in our car. Dale Jarrett did, Kyle did, and uh, to be part of that, that now he's you know we can always say he won his first race with us, and it'll always be that way. But it was just it was a great day, and like the the radio thing, and I mean it was just like us going back to the to the old days with with no radios. Um, he asked, you, you asked about uh, which it was. We used to have a piece of gray tape on the dash that would have roof loose, door push, and you, you know, that's what you went by. And uh, it just kind of took me back. And then right there at the end, the way he was trying to get away from Harvick and you know, drop it down to the inside like that. Neil Bonnet did that in 1980 here and uh, went, on, went on to win the race. And just, I don't know, it's just, it just like I had flashbacks. Really cool. He's like the 21st driver to win in our car, too. Really? Yeah. Number That's 21. Awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Take that one to the casino. Let's go to Kaylee. <laughs> <laughs> Kaylee Davis, ESPN.com. Ryan, um, I had an interview with your dad here 10 years ago, actually, in the, in the late race. And what we talked about was trying to stay in the top 35, you know, just so he was guaranteed a start the next week. And now here you are not very far from where your dad grew up in Victory Lane. What does it feel like to put the Blaney name and Victory Lane in the pinnacle of sport? Yeah. Um, yeah, my dad grew up not too far from here. He was kind of on the Ohio-Pennsylvania border in Hartford. But uh, to do it so close to where he grew up, and like I said, I remember this place so much. Uh, we always had a bunch of family come out here and, um, and always watch this race because he's, he's from right down the road. But, uh, yeah, that actually, he just dawned that on me that, uh, you know, my dad never, unfortunately, won in the Cup Series, and even though I feel like if he would have got the right opportunities, he would have done very well. Uh, and that's that's something that just dawned on me. Thanks for reminding me of that. It, that's really cool. We won. Uh, it was really special a few weeks ago. We won at Charlotte in the Xfinity Series, where he won his. Uh, it was Bush back then. Uh, that was his one Bush win, and, and now to do it uh, this week, getting uh, uh, Blaney in the Cup Series and Victory Lane. That's really that's really neat. I just, just figure that out. Thanks. That's cool. I appreciate that. We'll go to Joseph, then to John, then to Jake. Joseph Walken, FrontChurch.com. How important is today with Bubba making his debut and you bringing the Wood, or Wood Brothers back to Victory Lane, how big of a day is it for the next generation of racers? Well, I think it's a, it's a great day. Uh, you know, we've had a bunch of new winners this year. Um, you know, Ricky got his first win uh, this year. I think there was another... Who else? Austin. Austin, yeah, Austin won uh, the 600. So it's a huge year for the rookies. And then Bubba making his first start this weekend, uh, that's a big deal. And uh, luckily we were all able to get a picture before uh, before the race today with our cars. That was really neat. But uh, it's nice to be part of kind of this younger group of drivers. And um, I think we're all kind of coming into our own. Eric Jones had a great day today. He ran third. Uh, he had a super fast car all day. So I think it's uh, – it's pretty neat to just be part of the group. You know, you always want to be part of the group, and um, luckily we're uh, we're able to uh, finally get in victory lane. You know, because I've been pretty jealous of Larson and uh, and Austin and Ricky for getting in victory lane. You know, them being young guys as well, and now we can finally add our name to that group. We'll go to your left, to John, and then we'll go to Jake. Hey, John Hurdle on ESPN Radio Albuquerque. Uh, for Ryan and for Jeremy, uh, we're about we're just past the midway point of the regular season, so I just wanted to get like an evaluation for the first half of the regular season versus what you're going to do for the second half? Uh, more of the same. I, I mean, you have to – The we're in the chase now, and, and the reality of that is the way the struct point structure is, you have to win races to win a championship. And so, um, you know, there were some times, like the Texas thing, I got questioned at the end of the earth about going for stage points and all that. But, you know, at the end of the day, all that stuff's going to add up at the end of the year. And we've, we went into the season thinking – we can win a race and we can contend with these guys. And, and so that's the mindset we've had racing these races and trying to be aggressive at times. And um, that's certainly not going to change. I feel like, you know, we've, we've proven that we can do this. Um, we, you know, we, we beat some of the best today. Uh, we had a fast car. So I, I think, you know, for us, it's just more of the same trying to, you know, carry on and, and build on this. We've said from the beginning that it's a, it's a process of, of trying to 
to build a team that can do this week in and week out, and, and we're getting there. So we just got to keep working hard and uh, keep doing the things that have us here today. Yeah, and pretty much what Jeremy said, I feel like our approach this year has been you know, the right approach of, of going out there and trying to win races and win stages at the same time. And uh, you know, to be honest with you, before today, you know, without all the stage points we've gotten, we would be in big trouble. Uh, well, I think that's what kind of kept us alive here in the past month and a half when we've had our struggles. But uh, I don't think we do anything different. We'll go out and, you know, this team, we obviously proved we're capable of winning today, and I think we can go do that uh, most weeks. And uh, you just always want to kind of build your playoff stock. You know, these – I like the rules changes of, you know, you got to race all year. You get a win and you're in, but you can't uh, – <laughs> they thought it was one of those ones. You can't relax and because uh, that just sets you up for the end of the year. So. I was, uh, was going to ask about your father also. Um, have you spoken to anyone from your family yet? Have, has your father like, texted no, you I, anything yet? Uh, my, I leave my phone in the bus uh, before intros. So he I texted me, so I'm sure he's texted him. Oh, you te he texted you? <laughs> he probably texted you before me. Good job. Congrats. But, uh, about time. <laughs> about time? <laughs> That's a typical Dave thing to say. <laughs> Did he text you? I can't believe he didn't screw up. <laughs> give the win away. We'll go next to Jake and then to Dan. Uh, first, I just want to make sure – was the communication issue, was that for the whole race, or was it partway through? About lap 40. About lap about 40? About two-thirds of the way through the first stage. Mm -hmm. And when you realized what was going through your mind, this for Ryan or Jeremy, what, what was going through your mind, and what did you try in order to see if you could fix it? What, what happened was I kept hearing something key up, but there was no noise. And I knew right away that it was the mic in his helmet, because that's why you didn't hear the car running, you didn't hear background noise. I knew exactly what was wrong as soon as it happened. And so I asked him, I said, are you trying to talk to us? And I heard it key up again. So I'm like, okay, there's no way to fix this without giving up a bunch of time. So we're just going to have to old school it and get through it. And it was pretty much that simple. Uh, Dan Gelson with the Associated Press for the Wood Brothers. How has the relationship with the, the technical lines been with Penske? And how worried are you that you might not have Ryan next year? <laughs> I'm not going to worry about that today. Um, the relationship uh, – See, our relationship with, with Mr. Penske goes back to the early 70s. We actually met uh, Roger in uh, Riverside, California, the first race he showed up that, that we were there in 72 or 3 uh, with Mark Donahue at a Matador. And they won that race. And uh, we were parked beside those guys. And in those days, we all wore uh, white rental clothes, white shirt, white pants. And that's just everybody did. Well, when the Pinsky crowd showed up, they had black pants, and they had these white shirts with these things on the top. I, I didn't know what they were. They were epilaps. I'd never seen one, and I thought they were the coolest thing I'd ever saw. And they all had their shirt tails tucked, and they were all proper, and, you know, we looked like a bunch, bunch from no telling where. But <laughs> at that point, uh, we just made a friendship, and... Uh, and then when this opportunity came to, uh, to team up with, with Jeremy and Ryan, uh, it just all kind of fell into place. And uh, a lot of people were involved in making all that happen. Our, our good friend Edsel Ford, uh, he was part of that and uh, with Mr. Penske. And, and just things just really happened. And it, it's, it's, it, it's just a great relationship, um, I mean, and it's, uh, as the results show. And uh, everyone uh, treats us like family over there, the people that work the people that work over there that Lynn and I raced against in the early 70s, they're still there. Like, no one leaves. You go to work for Mr. Penske, you don't leave. You don't want to. And that's just the kind of group they are. And, and we, just, uh, we just love our race up there. Go next to Nate, then we'll go to Zach, and then we'll go to Scott. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Dan kind of stole my thunder a little bit, but I'll try to ask it in maybe a slightly different way. Eddie, you, you mentioned all the drivers you've had who, who have won their first race with you, and then, but the flip side of that is those drivers eventually move on somewhere else. And I know Roger was saying last week that you know third car possibility next year for Ryan next year at, at Penske. Is that is it just sort of understood that like you, you guys are a team where younger drivers are groomed and move on someplace else, and like while you guys have that time together, it's great, but it, maybe there's always a sense that yeah, it's not going to last long term. I mean, the, the relationship we have is great. <coughs> nobody can ever take this away, just like with Trevor Bain. You know, nobody can ever take that win away. And uh, 
you know, ever what happens uh, when, you know, when Ryan came to drive our car, it, it was actually kind of understood that he was going to be moving on probably the next year. And it, then it didn't happen. And, and whenever it happens, that's fine. You know, everybody will, will move on and, and, uh, and he will go on to bigger and better and greater things. He, it, he's going to win a lot of races and I think he's going to win some championships. Uh, and whatever we do from there, uh, it'll be fine. Uh, I think you and I have had conversations like this before. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're just excited to be where we are. It's a great place to be. Do you have any thoughts on that, What he said. I like where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go next to Zach, then to Scott, and then we'll go to this Zach. Zach Sternilla for the Pocono Record. Uh, Ryan, you kind of touched on it earlier, how, how difficult this place is. Um, but you've had some experience here before. You got, got a truck win here. What... How much does that prior experience help you coming into a place like this and, and uh, to conquer it here today? Uh, uh, you know, any race you have here before is uh, always helps. You always kind of put your memory bank in that race in 2013, that truck race we won on restarts. And we didn't have a ton of restarts today, but, you know, that restart, the last one, put us in a spot to be in second and be the you know, closest car to the front on tires. And, uh, there, yeah, there are some things that we uh, that I learned. Uh, in that truck race that you, you always just, whether you think about it or not, you just kind of subconsciously always just be kind of, the car becomes part of how you drive and how you do restarts and things like that. So, yeah, I can I could say that uh, probably somewhere embedded in your memory bank, uh, there's stuff you learned from back then when you were a kid to uh, to apply today in, uh, in the Cup Series. Scott, Scott Walsh from the uh, Scranton Times Tribune. Two questions. First for Ryan. Growing up, I'm sure you maybe dreamed about, you know, how uh, your first win was going to ever play out. How close to that dream did, you know, in reality kind of mix today? Uh? Um, you know, yeah, you always you always dream about, you know, winning a cup race. It's the ultimate, you know, it's, it's one of your goals. It's right below a championship. And, uh, you know, like I said, when I watched my dad race, no matter where it was, forever, uh, you know, I always appreciated um, – know how these races played out whether it was here or anywhere else but yeah, that's what you always dream about but uh you don't, you don't really think about it too much you're not like okay i'm gonna get this win this week you just kind of go in to each weekend and, and try to do the best you can and uh you know you can have confidence to run well and and but I, i'm not like oh if i win this race i'm gonna do this and this and this and uh, you know you just kind of focus on the task at hand but it definitely is you know, a little bit more surreal than you know, that I expected. It's uh, it's so cool to do it with a great team as well, and um, you know, this is what we've always wanted. What I always watched and wanted to do as a kid. So uh, I got lucky to get opportunities to make it happen. And for and for just uh, for Lennon uh, Edward, um, how tough has it been over the years for you guys to kind of survive and endure? And uh, I'm sure days like this make it make it all worth it. Maybe all the things you guys had to go through to uh, to kind of keep this thing going. Yeah, I mean it's it's like that for everyone. You know you. You go through lows, really low lows, and the highs are really, really high. But there's just enough highs to level out the lows. There's a lo probably a lot more lows than there are highs, but you got a lot of in between that's okay too. But uh, you just uh, take it, at, you know, one day at a time, and one situation at a time, and one crisis at a time. Everything you want to say it, you know, there's always something going on or changing in racing, and you just have to adapt and and figure out a way to, to make it work. And, you know, uh, we've always been fortunate enough to have good support from Ford Motor Company to, to help us through the hard times. And, uh, you know, then you have a day like today, you don't even remember the tough times. We'll go to Zach, Tom, and Jerry. Zach at Tanzabetti, French Dutch. Uh, two <laughs> questions. <laughs> Tom and Jerry. I've been dying to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thought I was the only one that caught that. <laughs> uh, great order, man. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Sorry, Zach. It's okay. Um, first question for Ryan. Um, Brad interviewed, interviewed you in Victory Lane. Yeah. Uh, you did that to him yesterday, so how was it to reverse walls? <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. Uh, yeah, so I was part of the Fox broadcast yesterday, and I just drew, I, you know, myself, Eric, and Stenhouse drew who was ever going to do first, second, or third, and I drew Victory Lane, and Brad happened to win, and that was so cool to interview him in Victory Lane, and Oh, man, it was awesome to see him, you know, just pretty much take the microphone from Jamie Little in Victory Lane and was like, I'm going to interview you. <laughs> uh, that was cool to see his support. Um, 
you know, I wouldn't be here without Brad, to be honest with you. He, he's the one who gave me my start. In 2012, um, you know, I, I started driving his trucks then and, and led to the Penske deal, led to the Wood Brothers deal, and um, I would be nothing if it wasn't for him and taking a chance on me. So he's been a, a huge you know, person I've looked up to, and hi for him to do that, that, that really, really makes me feel good and um, really cool to see his support still uh, as a great person. Hey, Phil, Phil Lennon and Eddie, um, next up is 100. So how big would that milestone be for the team? Uh, that would be unbelievable uh, to come from where we've been for the past few years. Um, you know, our, our dad and uncles uh, back in the 60s and 70s, you know, they were almost unbeatable and built built those wins up. And, you know, we've tried to maintain and, and do better. And uh, I think, you know, with Ryan winning and obviously Trevor Bain, you know, in 2011, um, Hopefully we can get that win number 100 out of the way soon. Go to Tom. Tom Bowles, Front Stretch. This question is for you, Ryan. You talk about the, the young guys, how important it is to be part of that group. Well, Kyle Busch tweets out, congratulations. Kurt Busch says, you're going to be the next superstar. Mario Andretti tweets out, you know, what an exciting win, great young star. Sure. What, what is it like to have, like, all these drivers so early in your career give you that sort of respect and accolades? It means a lot, obviously. I, that's really cool uh, that they showed their respects. It was so cool, you know, you, on the on the cool down lap to see everybody come up and and you know give you a thumbs up or Doria. It's that to me is so cool that to show all the support uh, that they have and uh, whether it's you know your your best friend or your worst enemy, the people you've had run-ins with, they're always you know they were congratulating me and that's cool. And you know I watched I grew up watching. Kyle Busch win tons of races, Kurt Busch and, you know, Mario Andretti. And, you know, it's an honor to race with those guys today. And to race uh, battle with Kyle Busch at the end was, was really cool. And, uh, you know, to, to race with someone I've, you know, looked up to a bunch when I was uh, when I was growing up. That's, that's really neat to be racing with him. You try not to think of that when you're racing. He's just another competitor. But after the fact, you know, that's, you know, as a fan of those people growing up, I, I kind of try not to fan out a little bit. And, and uh no, I, I you know, looked up to those people as a kid, like I said. So that is that is really cool. I'm excited to see what uh, what they all have to say. Jerry, Jerry Jordan, KickingTheTires.net and Performance Racing Network. Uh, along the lines with Kyle, he's not known to uh, be to be light to on anybody on the track, and he's never had a win here. So you were holding him, you passed him, and kept him from getting his win, and you held Kevin Harvick off. Were you aware of any of the ancillary things going on, or? Uh, no, not really. You know, you just try to, you, know, you see the leader and you want to pass him. And then you see whoever's behind you, if they're closing on you or not, which he was, uh, just trying to let them pass you. Uh, you don't really, like I said before, you, you don't really notice who it is. You know, if it's Kevin or Kyle or Brad or Joey, you don't really care who it is. You just want to, you know, stay in front of that person or pass that person. Um, so I, I don't really think of who it is. You just try to do your best. No matter what. Would this have mattered to him getting the pass? No. Oh, no. I mean, they're going to race me just as, as hard as, you know, anybody. They want to win, too. And, and you know, I'll say it again, Kevin was a really, really class act of, of not, you know, hitting me or getting me really loose, driving me really clean. Uh, and and that, was, uh, that was really cool of him. But uh, it don't really matter who's back there. They want to win just as bad as you do, and you always have to think about that. Matt Corson with TheRacingExperts.com uh, for Ryan. Now that you've won a race, what are some of your short-term goals for upcoming weeks? Uh, go try, try to win the next one. Um, you know, Michigan is, uh, is a huge race for us. Having Ford and Motorcraft and a quick lane on the car, they're right down the road. Um, that is a huge race for us, and uh, we always have Edsel sit on the <coughs> box. Uh, and that would be really neat to get him in victory lane. So we want to try to do that. Edsel actually just called Eddie. And, uh, but uh, that was, you know, like I said, our mindset doesn't change. We just want to go out and keep trying to win races. And you carry this momentum uh, as long as you can and uh, just try to keep building. I don't think we change up anything. Hi, Donnie Collins, Scranton Times Tribune. Um, my question is for Jeremy. Um, on the, uh, the, uh, the, the last uh, caution there, how soon did you know you wanted to take the four tires? There's a lot of strategy going on there. And, and how much did Kyle's decision play into that? I really didn't. Um, I think, you know, we knew 
I think we had 15, 16 laps on our tires, and there was still 20 to go. Uh, I felt like we were not the best car. Uh, I felt like the 18 was the best car, uh, so we needed another shot at adjusting it, and we needed tires. Um, you know, the guys we were scanning, the guys we felt like we were racing around us were probably going to come too. Um, so, honestly, as soon as the caution came out, it's like, I said, hey, I'm thinking about pitting, and I got the <laughs> out the window. So, you know, it was like, okay, <laughs> cool. Here we come. So. Kaylee? Yeah, Kaylee Davis, ESPN.com. And Ryan, I apologize in advance, but the next time you meet Daisy Ridley, are you going to tell her what you do for a living? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe she watched the race today. And you never know, but uh, you know, <laughs> what'd you say? It could be the difference, you know. I don't know if I if I ever meet her again, if I ever cross paths with her, I still won't tell her what I do. <laughs> That's not cool, but uh, you know, that was really neat. Maybe I'll run into her again. Open invitation to the victory party. Open invitation. You better get on a flight right now because <laughs> it'll actually be going on all night. So she got plenty of time to get here. It should be great. Hopefully he comes. I'm trying to figure out what to do. What do you guys think? I don't know. Let's do it. I might ask Dale if we can go to his town. That'd be really cool. Well, I'll let you guys go so you can go get that victory party planned. Uh, and uh, congratulations. Good luck next week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody.